everyone, Morgan with Advanced Answer here, and today I'm going to show you how to make the backdrop and the table decorations for this woodland themed baby shower. Now this is the second video in this series, so check out the card above and I'll link you back to the first video if you haven't uh, seen that one yet, and that will tell you a little bit more detail about this baby shower. But for today, I'm going to show you how to make this baby sign using natural twigs as well as the large box you see and the general decorations going on for this project. So let's get right into it and I'll show you how I did it. To start off this project, I went into my yard and picked up a bunch of sticks and twigs. Then I grabbed some 9.5 inch MDF letters which I got from my local craft store. And what I'm going to do is basically make a hanger for these using some fishing line or what's also called monofilament. So just cut up a small section about eight inches long or so and just hold that in place on the back side of the letter and hot glue both ends and then trim it to size. The next step is basically like assembling a giant jigsaw puzzle. You're gonna sort through all your twigs and find twigs that kind of go with each other, alternating between big and small, slight curves, different colors to make them all fit together. Now when you're adding them to your letter, I found it was best to cut the twigs just slightly longer than the section of the letter you were doing, and that way the MDF doesn't show through underneath so much. As you get the pieces cut to size, go ahead and put a generous amount of hot glue onto the MDF, and then place your twigs in the orientation you'd like. I found that this project worked best if you have twigs that are pretty straight. The more curved they were, the harder it was to get them to fit and lay nicely onto the MDF. So a lot of my curved twigs, I actually cut up into these tiny pieces and used in the narrow sections of the letter. For my baby shower, I wanted to keep it very gender neutral and went ahead and just spelled out baby, but if you happen to know the name of the little one, you could go ahead and spell out their name for this sign and it would make such a personalized touch to not only the shower, but you could use these signs again in their nursery. Once I had completed all the letters, I then took my moss circle, which I created in another video and will have linked above for you. I laid that flat on a table and I'm adding some fairy lights to it. And then I'm going to lay out all the letters onto the circle and make sure that I get them in a straight line. Once I'm satisfied with that and make sure it's aligned with the hanger on the moss circle so it doesn't hang crooked, I'm then going to attach the letters to the moss sign using corsage pins. So those loops we made at the very beginning, I'm going to take a corsage pin and pull that loop up to the very top and push the pin in and try and hold the letters in place so that they don't get out of alignment and then push that pin down and at an angle downwards into the foam core that's behind the moss and that will secure all the letters in place. So now I'm ready to hang this on the backdrop. On the back side of my circle here, I've secured the battery pack for the fairy lights using a little bit of pipe cleaner. And with the hanger on the moss circle, I'm attaching it to a piece of wire. Now I secured that wire to my PVC backdrop frame and then threw it up over the top of the curtain and I'm attaching that to the moss circle. Now I just tidy up the lights a little bit and make sure everything's straight. Now let's get started on the giant box. In the description box below, I provided a link to the files that I created for this baby shower, and that includes five different woodland critters, one of them being the fox here. And in those files are poster-sized versions of all those critters. Now these will fit your standard poster board, which you can find at any craft store. And you can print those out either at home, like what I've done, in a tiled format, or you can take them to your local printer and have them printed on a large format paper version which saves you the step of taping all of these together. Once you have your final image using either method, what we're gonna do is take a pair of scissors and cut out the perimeter of the fox. Don't worry about cutting any facial features at this moment. The printout is now gonna act as a template for you to cut out all of the colored pieces for the fox. So the first color we're gonna work on is the background color of the fox, which for him is orange. So take your piece and just in a couple places, tape it down so it doesn't shimmy on you. And then with a pencil, trace the entire outline of the fox. Once you finish tracing, go ahead and remove the fox template, grab your pair of scissors and cut out following the lines that you just created. Bring your template back out and now we're gonna cut out the white parts of the fox from the template. This includes the ears, 
the face pieces, the tummy, and the tip of the tail. You're going to do the exact same thing you did with the orange and cut out all of these pieces from white poster board and then repeat the same for the eyes, the nose, and the feet out of black poster board. I then attached all the pieces of the fox using double sided tape, but you can use any kind of adhesive that you like. That could be glue sticks, Elmer's glue, spray mount, or even hot glue. The important thing here is that all the pieces are attached well and that they lay flat. And now it's time to make the fox stand up straight. I have a piece of foam core board here and it's about 5 inches wide by 20 inches tall. And you want to make sure that it's absolutely square to the feet of the fox. And I'm going to attach it here with a little bit of packaging tape, but you could also use hot glue in this situation. And then I also have a 90 degree triangle that I'll attach and this will be what will make the fox stand up. A 90 degree triangle will make him stand perfectly straight, but you might want to shave a tiny bit off the bottom of that triangle which will help him lay back just a tiny bit and might give some more stability to how he stands. So with that triangle you also want to make sure it's square to the, to the back of the fox and I'm just going to take packaging tape and tape it on one side and stand the triangle up when you attach the tape and only do it on one side because this will make it so that the flap can fold over and makes it much easier to travel with. And that completes the box. He's ready for the party. Now if you want to use any of the other critters, I also have a bear, a raccoon, a deer, and an owl available in the poster board printouts. So check out the description box below if you want any of those other critters. I kept the decorations for the rest of the table very neutral and simple. I think this adds elegance to it and lets the colors really pop off of the animals and the signs. I've used canvas and linen for the backdrops. I've got grass and moss to accentuate some color. Now I have kept this very gender neutral, but if you knew the gender of the baby and you wanted to really accentuate that, you could easily change out the paper goods, the plates and cups to represent the gender of the baby. I hope you found today's project inspirational. It was a lot of fun putting together these pieces for Woodland Baby Shower. Now make sure you hit the subscribe button below and turn on that notification bell because next time I'll be showing you how to make these diaper cakes. So beginning to end, how to build them and then how to decorate them for this baby shower. So you don't want to miss out on that. Um, I'll see you next week on Friday for the following video in this series. So make sure you subscribe and we'll see you then. Bye.